So this question Dahlia had asked on the off chance, but I'll be honest, it's a question that kind of weighs on my mind a little bit. <laughs> and okay. I just, uh, this is going to sound so weird coming from me. It's a boxers or brief? No. No. No, because that's the answer is both to those. Uh, no, the question is, how do you guys wipe? Oh, my mean? God. <laughs> Why do you guys always have to bring like, this is coming oh up my in the God. toilet conversation? I actually was the one who asked this question because I asked you Antonio, know, and then he's like, that would be good for a cold open. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's put that in our back pocket. It's a question that I sometimes like wonder in my head when I'm doing my business. I'm, and I'm just curious. Like, How do other people do it? What do you but, mean? Like front to back or side to side? To I mean, generally, like, for <laughs> the universal experience, everyone who poops, how do you wipe? Here, I mean, obviously, you here. guys have specifically your frontal regions to worry about yeah who said that <laughs> apparently not you <laughs> who told you that well yeah because that's its own fucking monster i've had this discussion with my college friends about like wiping the vag- the vaginta um and that's a whole fucking different monster so we okay. can we can discuss what we all have in common which is where everybody the, poops the butthole the second so, now i mean i can i can go first and i would take like probably maybe more than I need to of uh, TP and fold it in such a way like, I don't know. Origami? Fold it and f- like I'm rolling it basically back into a roll, but then I flatten it and then I use that. <laughs> Sky's not wipe. here for this. <laughs> I hate this conversation. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I ha- and then Are I, you done? <laughs> I guess, yeah. And then, you know, I just make sure that it's all clean down there. And then if I don't feel like I'm confident about it, I'm, I use the wet uh, moist towelette or whatever. Wait, you do that second? I do. I, I do that wipe. last so that it's clean. I wipe with the regular uh, oh, no, no, toilet like paper. <laughs> and then I use the wet wipe. And then I go back in with the, the regular toilet paper. With the drill. <laughs> I really <laughs> look. I really hate this. <laughs> when she's clear, it's good. Wait, why has this been weighing on your mind, Antonio? Are you afraid of the answers? Yeah, like what? No, no, no where? No. It why? Just, I always wonder about it. I just don't know because okay, haunting. So it's it's like everyone has their own procedures. I like do <laughs> probably like uh, one. I use a specific more brand. Expensive. Yeah. I yeah. guess things that are thicker and more rippled, anything that's cheap, then yes, I'm loading up probably like you do um, to the point where like I'm using more than I probably should. But with the ones that I do use, it's usually like four layers thick, you know, or like four sheets across. And then it goes wipe, fold, wipe, fold, you know. I also it. fold. Yeah. And then I start with the wet one. I always start with the wet. And it goes wipe, fold, wipe, fold. Really? Eh. Why? Don't you want to get the big shit out first and then go in with the wet for the finer details? No, because by the what the small stuff does, or what the dry stuff does afterwards <laughs> is literally just drying and cleaning up all that little bit. What's Technique. your wipe procedure? Okay, well, first of all, I have several thoughts about this. One, I don't use the moist towelette thing even though i enjoy it because i don't fully believe that they are biodegradable so i don't think they're i don't think they're great for the environment so as much as it's really nice to use them i don't feel like it's good which is why i wanted wanted the bidet for a while now um so my thing is to get a shit ton um reach on i don't know you guys have a fucking process i fucking reach on over and wipe i don't know i don't know what you want me to say you it's a lot yeah, I do ball do it up. It? It's like making a croissant. You got to laminate. <laughs> God, my fucking coworkers listening to our podcast. First of all, <laughs> this is what they're going to approach me with. <laughs> I, it, ever since I started waxing my ass, it makes it so much easier and smoother. Like the cleaning process. That. Because there's not, there's, there's not a lot of like, it's like, it's there's like when to sw- grab onto. I, I got you. Let's start this thing. Shall we? Right. Hey, hey, hey. You guys are no longer in charge of cold <laughs> opens. <laughs> no, Antonio, this can still, this can keep being your domain. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Sit Down, Loser. We're watching a movie. My name's Dahlia. I'm Sky. I'm Antonio. And I'm Quetzal. And we're just four American graduate students who definitely aren't alleged real life cannibals. Who watch movies that everyone else has watched, except one of us is a loser who hasn't. 
Today, we're watching a movie that made Timothy Shalabalgu a household name and white boy of the month in many, many teenagers' hearts. Call Me By Your Name, released in 2017, directed by Luca Guadagnino. And today's loser is Antonio and Dahlia. Double Yay! loser, baby. <laughs> the worst combination ever. We're truly, fine. as we <laughs> truly can, I see from the, the corner. I kind of want to just turn around and go back to this plot point where it said white boy of the month in many teenagers' hearts. And man, did like three different white boys all just lash in my mind oh yeah but he he's definitely one top that white i keep top seeing white. Top oh yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. top I white of the year about. he looks like a sad sick boy i love <laughs> victorian sick boys. boys he does sad, look sick. like a victorian prince. like i just want to get a victorian <laughs> prince oh he needs he's some sick soup. he's sick <laughs> soup. Get that you need boy some milk <laughs> <laughs> he needs <laughs> What did you guys say? I don't know anything about this movie. <laughs> Wait, All okay, right, so why did we pick this? <clears throat> well, uh, Alphabet Mafia movie. Ka ka da ka. LGBTQ we gay. IAA plus, plus community. Baby. And baby. We're all gay here, so. We gotta watch Super it. Super gay. We gotta watch it. Um, well, me and it, you have seen it. They have to see it. <laughs> Another yes, stamp I, on my queer card. Yes, it, and I, I will talk about that experience for me in a little bit. But this this movie, not only we're watching it because we gay, but it is like, it, it stole the hearts of so many. It was based on a novel and got all the fucking Oscars. Like, no one shut the fuck up about this movie. And honestly, as much as like, it was without its controversies, it's not without its controversies, fucking beautiful ass film um, with yeah. a killer soundtrack killer soundtrack it's very it's a very very beautiful movie i think everyone should at least see this movie once i mean we'll get into that more but like it does have some things that i think are wrong with it but and i we'll i know one of us in this room also thinks there's something wrong with it which is true but yeah we'll get into that later i i do want to say that um i i knew of this movie, um, and when the trailer came out with the Sufjan Stevens song, because I'm a huge Sufjan Stevens fan, and he did the soundtrack, um, I re-listened to the isolated audio of that trailer over and over and over again, because <laughs> of how horny I was for the song, how beautiful it looked, so I was obsessed with the trailer, and I saw this movie in theaters, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, it was beautiful. Yeah, that's all I, I gotta say. I didn't see it in theaters. I just saw it when it was on. I couldn't tell stars. you what, this, <laughs> what the trailer looked like. I probably yeah, I out. I don't think I ever saw the trailer. I think I watched it because oh, I'm sure how I talked it. about this movie was because I I don't think I ever saw the trailer for it. Yeah, what do you guys know going into that? Um, I'll I'll go first because me Timothy Shamalagu <laughs> some love some gayness and that's that's it. That's I literally know nothing else. Wow. I know really? nothing. I know absolutely nothing other than the things I just said. Okay, so I know a bit about this movie, um, mostly because of a couple of key plot points that happen in it. And I know the one with um, where fruits are involved. Um, the I do know that it's supposed to be like, is it European? I want to say it's like European. Um, it's European setting. And I'm going to say it's Italian because the director is Italian. Mm-hmm. So Antonio, for a long time, um, to the listeners, for some context, did not want to watch this film because um, I believe that you thought the age gap was a lot larger. It was a lot than, more for something that was... Which is fair. Like, you which know, is, and I'm not a big person to, like, be against, like, inter intergenerational relationships at all. I am. Um, in reality. <laughs> in reality, for people who are, let's say, over, like, 25. That's when you can start making decisions like that. Anyone younger than 25, then, you know, you really shouldn't. I thought that the portrayal of um, actors Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> you can say his real actual, name. <laughs> an actual cannibal army hammer. <laughs> Alleged. <laughs> Alleged. I thought that the portrayal was like a little bit not right, you know, for something that was yeah, partially, fair. or like a blockbuster or anything. I was like, mm, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, I, you know, in reality, fine. That's something, but I didn't want people to like go and watch it and be like oh that's super okay but i did not know that the ages in the book at least are what it's 17, 17 and, 24. and 24 see that's not that bad of a generational gap but when you ah. look at army hammer next to Thim timothy shamalame timothy 
Tim- is it Timothy? Timothy. It's Timothy. Tim. Tim- I'm gonna call him Timmy. Tim Tam. Yeah. Uh, Timothy Nook. Timmy. If you Timothy call him Nook. Timmy, I'm gonna be turned off. And by Hannibal this movie. Lecter. Why? I just can't see him as a Timmy man. Uh, Let's all have don't names call for him. him Timmy. <laughs> okay. Call me all by right? Tim. <laughs> Call Tim me the by your Timmy. Man Taylor. <laughs> Call me by your Tims. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Call me Timberwind. Anyway, I, I hate the way this back is going. It. When you put those two together, I don't see 17 and 24. What yeah, do you see? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll probably see like 16 Ar- and. Army mm-hmm. looks like he's 40. And, yeah, I want to say 40, but I was like, eh, I can knock off a couple of years. Like, let's say 37. Sure. That's what Which it looked is- like to me. And I was like, you know, if they aged up Timothy's. Timothy. I'm just going to say Timothy. Just say Timothy. Oh, my gosh. Timothy's. uh, (laughs) (laughs) If they aged up his character, sure, or they chose someone else who looked a little bit older, then it would have been like, okay. But I don't believe that boy can grow facial hair, and so that was a problem for me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he'd be perfect for Ryan Murphy. (laughs) Uh, He's already outside of Ryan Murphy's league. He really is. Ryan Murphy doesn't know that, though. Went way Ryan past Murphy go. don't know that though. <laughs> Ryan Murphy Skip don't know. That's shit. why he has his like talons in Sarah Paulson, because she's so oh. talented, and he can't let her go. I do want to say we can discuss this after the fact. I still don't think that seventeen and twenty four is a great, great thing to do. No, I don't. Is, I one hundred percent don't agree with that. But if there's more to say, people? if yeah, there's more to say, s- I think we can say that in the in the later part. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. All right, so going up that, let's look at these actors to see what you guys know them from. And I just also, before I fucking say the <laughs> actors, before I fucking say the actors, hey, we know Army Hammer did fucked up shit beyond the cannibal thing, but it's just the jokes are right there. The jokes write oh. themselves. Oh. We're very sorry. Um, they're right there, Not guys. Not to toe the on. line, but <laughs> they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Someone woke up and chose not God. <laughs> they chose human flesh. <laughs> they chose human flesh, and now we're going to laugh about it because <laughs> we don't know, know what else to put do. Put the toes in his mouth, army hammer bit. Bit down. <laughs> 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 Who's really yep. at fault here? <laughs> Who's the real villain the, of this podcast? The fault in our toes, you guys. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's the fault in our toes. Have you seen the new villain? <laughs> not the fault in our toes. I love that film. <laughs> I love that movie. By Quentin Tarantino. Oh my god, has everyone seen The Fault in Our Stars? No. No. Me I thought you didn't like up. dramatic romance. Yeah. I was dragged to the theater. And you know what I felt during that? What's the opposite of ridiculed? The part where you like feel like ridiculing everyone else? Jesus bully. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> A bully. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, uh, you let's felt like bullying that. people? Oh, one hundred percent. That movie right, made right, you right, want right, to bully right. people. All right. <laughs> Tell All right. me who's in this movie. So we have Timothy Shablagu, which I refuse to say his full name correctly. Um, and then Army Hammer, and then uh, Michael. St- I'm I'm really not good at pronouncing. Stolberg, so forgive Stolberg. me. Stolberg, thank Stuba. you. And then Amira Caesar, Casar, Casar. We should start looking up pronunciations. We're terrible at this. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, those are the main players in this movie. Uh, the, I knew the what first do you guys two. know them from? What do you know them from? Um, uh, the post news. This <laughs> movie. <laughs> post this movie, I know uh, Timothy is in Dune. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, have I actually seen him in anything else? I don't think so. I really? might have. I just I can't recall. Did we see him in something together? Because you'll know better than I will. Because I forget things immediately. Um, I saw him. Hi, I'm Dory. <clears throat> I saw him in Lady Bird. I think that yep, was the yep, first. Yep. Thing. That's my. I, oh. That's the first thing I saw him in. I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. I did see that. Uh, it didn't stick out for me. I guess, or I just don't remember. Is that all he's been? Oh, and then Little Women was the other thing. Oh, didn't see that either. Yeah, but Lady Bird came out beforehand, so that was the first thing I had seen him in as well. Or no, they came out the same year. So I think I just saw Lady Bird first. That was his year. 2017 was his fucking year. He was in everything. Mm-hmm. Good for you, Timothy. Yeah, he's a good actor. As much as I like to make fun of him. 
I don't know anything about Army Hammer. Every time I look at his name, I think Armand Hammer, the brand, and I'm just I can't take him seriously. I'm like, who named That's what you? You can't take seriously about him anymore. I, <laughs> look, look, look! I'm not on the Twitter to be looking up. You don't have things to be on the Twitter. You just cannibals. have to look at your phone. I did, and you guys told me that he's an alleged cannibal. Alleged. Hmm? <laughs> alleged. Not trying to get sued. Alleged. <laughs> and I, I feel like Michael Stolberg is somebody I. He Can certainly you is. The name? is it, was he in Inglorious Bastards? No. Nar? He's in like so. several things. He just shows up. Is in he a things. very. Is he I in a lot of like European movies? Because some of these names, and it's my fault for not being cultured, but like the, some of these people are probably really big in other countries and we just don't get a state side. No, he's American. US. He's in a rival, bro. Oh. Really? <gasps> yes. Oh I'm telling. God. I'm telling. I'm, I'm telling. I'm telling. Amy oh my Adams. god! Who does he? You'll see him. You'll see him later. Don't worry. Oh my god! Oh I my god! I love Arrival. I I've never wait. known him. I mean, there are only two people that are really important in that movie, to me, obviously, because they're the big. Both ones, the but. aliens. <laughs> <laughs> wait! Don't ruin it for oh me. All right, see me and Dolly. I haven't seen it, so. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Stop this! Okay, Spoilies. Let's stop this! So sorry. I love that movie so much. I'm um, so excited to watch that movie whenever we get to it. And I have no idea. List, I don't know who your favorite movie. I don't know who Amira is. So. I don't yeah, know fine. anything about America, sir. Um, then I guess the last thing we can go over is the Rotten Tomato score, as well as the audience and the Google scoring. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a ninety-four percent. Audiences gave it an eighty-six percent, and then Google users gave it a ninety-two percent, which is That's practically an A. It's an A, baby, average. That's an A. That's an A. So yeah, that's an A for me. So that's kind of like pretty high. And given that you've said, Ketzel, that they have won awards for this film, I am excited to see. And I want to get into some romance because I am sad. Well, we got <laughs> you. Well, this is not. You know what? Gonna... We'll see. We'll, we'll, no, we'll no, get no, back I, to it. I, yeah, yeah. I just miss my guy. Am I going to love love or hate love? I want to yes. love love. We yes. love love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love like, love. Yes. Yes. Yes to all of that. Okay, I'm excited. What do you, do you guys have any expectations? I have NAR expectations. NAR. None. NAR. <laughs> I do know some trivia, but we'll leave it for afterwards. I just leave it for afterwards. Yeah. We're we talking either. expectations, friend. Do you have expectations? Any? I'm sure it's going to be juicy. Ooh, okay. it's juicy, all right. Wink. All right. All right. Wink. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. I'm upsetty, which is the mm, it- upsetty spaghetti. spaghetti. It's the Italian word that for upset. <laughs> All right. And we're back. We are back and we're <laughs> sad and horny. <laughs> Don't make that sound, sad, please. Sad, horny boys. The sad, horny what, boys. The sad and horny sin? Sad, horny boys. I am so overwhelmed. I did cry because I was like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the everything except for that last part of the movie, I was like, mm, mm. the call. Mm. The no, when dad. I mean, actually, when mom starts. When dad is the scene for everyone that made everyone cry. Man, oh yeah. man, it's yep. such a good. Man, oh man, monologue. oh man. Oh, wonderful! I'm like, you I'm said okay with being ridiculed if I feel over that. You said everything. But yeah, what a great movie! Wow, 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 wow! <laughs> Already wow. going off. And strong. we can just <laughs> we can just straight up start going into it. But I have nothing but good things to say. Oh, Dahlia! Except, oh, that's cute. About Oliver? Yeah, because he annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Another Mr. Darcy mm. moment. Bury that. Okay, can Bury I? That. Okay, let's start off this thing, and I would like to start off by saying that it's a goddamn shame. Because Army Hammer's fucking hot. It's a goddamn shame how things ended up. I was going to ask, do you guys think he's attractive? Because I was looking at him and I was like, he do be looking fine. He do fine. be looking But I, at the same time, knowing what I know now, I'm like, it's just a shame. He's a very attractive Not my toes. I did not care for the choice of Army Actor. Uh, uh, <laughs> Army, Army Hammer for Army Army Hammer. Actor for this. Of Armin Hammer. I'm so sorry. Of Armin Hammer as Oliver. I did not care for it. I still Why? don't care for it. Visually or like the acting? Visually. Like really? strictly, That's very strictly different. visually. Because I'm like, the acting was on point, baby. 
Oh, no. Yeah. No. Acting was decent. It's fine. But, you know. Decent? Acting can come from. Brings a tiny know. mug. <laughs> decent. I'm the one with fantastic. the here. Acting was decent. Sure. Whatever. But visually speaking, I still am not sold on him being a 24-year-old um, oh, resident. Sure. Uh, I mean, yes, in terms of the way he looked, you know, I could believe that Timothy Elio yeah. was 17 yeah. and Army Hammer was 40. He just looked so much older. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes that just is the case. But I feel like he played the part very well. And although it was tough to get behind that sometimes because he just did look so much older. But maybe it's just because Timothy just looks so young. He looks so it's young. It's so funny, though, because like they were wearing shorts a lot and i was like looking at army's like thighs and i was like his thighs are the size of one timothy <laughs> and <laughs> like i was truly, like holy shit this guy's fucking huge truly. you know for a lazy, terrifying or not lazy what what was portrayed to be like a lazy um resident in um the what is it northern italy you know he did a great job acting but man you probably could have found someone a little bit younger looking for it yeah, he was hot, though. That's a hot take. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, he was hot, though. <laughs> that, I'm not going to not agree with that, but I honestly, you know. And no, but why don't we... we found someone? He kind of looks like someone that would eat human flesh, though. He, oh he, do, be, he you know, do be looking he like he... He was about to eat fucking Elio. He was about okay, to eat. Okay, like, watch go, out. We can just start it now and <laughs> get to these parts about things that <laughs> are being said. Okay, um, all right. So we Okay, so this movie takes place in the 80s. This is an 83, and we have Timothy Chalabalagu as Elio, who is 17 years old, and he is knows all the languages, is so talented. He's like, knows Italian, French, English, plays piano, plays guitar. He's not like other boys. He's just not like other he boys. He's not like other he, boys. He knows how to read. He knows how to read. He can read. He knows how to read. He knows how to fucking read, and his family's vacationing um, in northern Italy, and they're having a grad student, Oliver, aka Arm and Hammer, come down to <laughs> come down to be with uh, his professor dad. Which, um, what a great gig as a grad student to get to vacation in Italy and do academia. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I think that's why the dad does that, and I think it's just the dad. You can already tell he's such a great person. Like it's a great family. You can just see the dynamic immediately. But oh yeah, the the dad invites a student every summer. And this time it just happened to be him. So it really was yeah. so wild that this just happened to be the way that it was. But he's here. He's here. Um, and, you know, we meet Elio and it's so cute. He's very introverted. And we like we said, he likes to read. And then at some point, somebody's like, if you read, it's like you have secrets. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, that's oh. kind of scary. Me gay. Um <laughs> <laughs> and of course opposites attract because oliver is absolutely not like that you know he's a stupid american is what i wrote down i'm just like you could see all the beautiful cultural and like everybody is mannerisms are so different but also it's the summertime and it's europe people act a certain way it's very like laissez and then he comes here and he's like later and everyone's like later Laters. Who says later? Later. Laters. Laters. So Laters, later. baby. <laughs> ah! Laters, baby. Why does it always come to Fifty Shades? <laughs> it's just it always get out, back, go. It circle jerks its way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was your first uh, thoughts on Oliver? Because he truly gives me American frat boy vibes. When I first watched it, I was like, he- "You dumb bitch." <laughs> He absolutely does. He gives me like very carefree. When he said he was from New England, I'm like, you absolutely are. You absolutely are with those tiny shorts and your <laughs> socks and boat shoes. I'm just like, absolutely. And your entitlement. And his quaffed hair in such a way. I'm just like, oof. That's why I was like, I wrote down the stupid American because I'm like, isn't that just New Englandy? Sorry, New Englanders. I'm not. That's where you are. <laughs> Technically, apparently, Pennsylvania is not New England. I've been told that because I fucked up and said it was New England. Uh, not, it's not, apparently. New England? What happened to Old England? That's what I'm saying. It still exists. Yeah, it's back. Who said? Back there. It's New England the pond. Is, New England is the bastardized version of Old England. New York? Anyway. <laughs> There's a York. There's New Hampshire? Uh. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> New Jersey. New Mexico. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and anyway, anyway, <laughs> we, we just see that they're totally, they're two totally different people. And it is at this point that we're like at this volleyball game that's happening because we, we see how they're two totally different people. And Oliver's like, Unibut playing volleyball with no shirt and tiny, tiny shorts. And we loved it. And Elio's here. He's with like, a six pack. What is even happening? What six pack? Fucking Ellie was having a bisexual <laughs> panic. Isn't he though? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. Like I seeing, I know you said you don't agree with the casting, but I, I think it was good casting. He's very charming. He is. Which is why. I just can't get over like. He ate the so many people. Portrayal. Allegedly. 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 It writes itself. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think him looking older does make it more like you have to double think like, ooh, is this okay? Because he does look a lot older. I mean. Is that the goal? Agree. Was that the goal? For no, I don't think passing? it's the goal. I think it doesn't, it doesn't lend well to trying to like, like you, wa- make you okay. want him to get together, but then you're also like, ooh, he's 17 though. The taboo, you know. He's 17. He's too mm-hmm. young. He doesn't know better. Like imagine. I will say though. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll wait till you're done. I was, no, I was going to say, I'm like, imagine you at 24. Like, what could you possibly talk to a 17-year-old about? What could you possibly yeah. talk about or have in common? Or- Actually, now that you bring that up, I'm like, every time I thought about anybody who was under the age of 18 after I was 18, I was like, huh? it's yeah. so You're in completely different <laughs> yeah. places in life. But that beside, yeah, like, but uh, all that aside, uh, when uh, Oliver does touch Elio's back, I did scream because it's all about the hands, as Pride and Prejudice mm-hmm. taught us. I was like, <laughs> it was so good. I yeah. screamed. I touch also starved. screamed. Touch star. Yeah. I mean, did you see? Did you see how how forceful that was? Like he left mm-hmm. the, like uh, a little imprint of, yeah, on the like skin. I was like, like, but then he was like, <laughs> you know, what? he me? moved. When anyone touches me, he uh, moved away. Just like, uh, just like, run. Don't touch me. The no bitch. thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think I I think you're probably the same. I don't know if you're the same way, but I definitely fall between the line of wanting to be touched, but then also when you touch me, I'm like, don't do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever perceive like, me? <laughs> like the thought of don't it touch me nice, unless you're going to fall. You actually do it, I'm like, no, no half no, measures. No. no half measures. You're like, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Only touch me if you're really into it, and then. No, once you touch me, is, it's no go it, back. No take these backsies. Is it cat logic where it's like, okay, you can touch me. Okay, stop touching <laughs> but only me. Three, I don't want that. Three touches. <laughs> After that, it. I will scratch you. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so like, it was so wild. Me at first, I wasn't into it. I was just like, oh no, it looked like he really, really didn't like that. You know? Oh and yeah. Later on in the movie, we oh. find out. No, but it's he was trying to hide his boner. Day. That's what that's what that reaction was. Yeah. Oh really? really? I don't know yeah. about. I didn't boner get that at all. I didn't get that. I got that. Uh, please don't touch me. <laughs> I feel like he but didn't know what to do with here. that. He was like, eh. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It I, sent I, him I'll, in a spiral. Yeah, that, you should have started with that. I would have been there. <laughs> you're like, this is fine while you're on fire. <laughs> that's what it was so yeah it was really it was really wild it's like ooh, you know what's happening here and to me when when he was talking how you were saying he he's just so charming for me it came off as arrogance and i didn't I mean, like that at the time uh oh, Elio yeah. doesn't like him either he's like don't you find it terrible that he says like later isn't that so rude blah blah blah, blah. So, yeah it seems impolite yeah yeah so i mean even just the way that he talks is so, just uh brass garbage yeah and <laughs> rough trade garbage garbage it was a lot it was a lot obviously but yeah so in moving on to um seeing oliver you know kind of become the center of attention uh elio gets kind of like jealous mm-hmm. actually not kind of jealous very jealous because <laughs> his childhood friend i think her name is chiara or is it chiara i think it's with a key because in italian you say ch with a, a k right k- yeah that sounds right. And then CC is ch. I took a little bit of Italian in college. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Elio. Um, in collage. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's wild because then we see Oliver going out with uh, Kiara and then Elio is like chit-chatting her, I think, at the beginning of the movie. So it's like they were kind of fond of each other. And he gets jelly. Was this at the time that we went to the dance? Yeah, I think that's right around that part. 
Which, like, so, completely was the revival of the song Love My Way, and I'm happy to see it. After this came out, fucking everyone was listening to the psychedelic furs, and good for them. Good for fucking them. Also, like, according to it, my notes, it was good. according to my notes, um, Elio almost getting caught fucking jerking it off I wrote happened that before too. the dance, and I want to talk about that. Okay, good, because I wrote something down about that, too. <laughs> because... <laughs> What a horrifying situation. <laughs> I don't know what I do with nobody myself. nobody wants... I'm a married person, and we can cut this out. No, we're keeping it in, damn it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I want to watch a Who's What's It, and I don't want Antoine to walk in. So it's secretive, and it's very scary to have anybody... You don't want him to walk in? Even my significant other. I don't want him to walk in and see me, like, doing stuff to myself. Okay? Like, it's really, really weird. And yes, we all do need that sometimes like obviously he could do it for me but sometimes you just want to do it by yourself and it, it is that scary and i wrote down like uh <laughs> oliver walks in on him during like fat time and that shit was scary did you see how <laughs> fucking fast he got his hand out of his pants and then on this book and he's like me reading me <laughs> i was reading the whole time i would have left the country <laughs> there's no way <laughs> he tried to pick him up off the bed and i'm just like no I have a half boner don't pick me up <laughs> It was really scary. I was like living through Elio. You were Elio. scared for him. I you was. Were scared li- for I was the photo him. Reveal for him. I was him. I was living through him. I put myself in his shoes, and that was really scary. Have y'all ever though been caught? No, I'm sure I have. Mm, I can't fathom. I so. I can't fathom the fear. <laughs> hey. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't. Where were we in the oh, plot? Oh, so we they were the, talking about getting caught. The, well, they they got caught. He got caught with his hand down his pants. Um, and then the dance happened and the mind, that's pretty much it. They just keep building the tension and the whole, like, will we, won't we, when are they finally going to kiss? And actually it doesn't happen for a long ass time. Um, I'm pretty True. sure he puts, um, Elio puts his face in Oliver's shorts. Not that long after this, which yeah, he wait, starts wait, wait. being a little wait, freak and I- starts smelling his clothes. He do <laughs> right before that. Where he we get to this point because Elio goes with his dad with Oliver to a site where they find stuff. Everybody's excited, everybody's happy. We're all jumping around the ocean, and then they're all screaming each other's names. They're like Elio, Oliver, and then he, as soon as he gets home, he gets on his bike to go find Marzia, who's he's he's been seeing since his other girlfriend was taken, and we see that he has like a blue ballsy moment, and that I think really, really stirred up the tension for the. I'm gonna stick my head in your shorts. You you knew you were like, is he gonna sniff them? <laughs> I'm like, he show sure is. <laughs> sure and my is. question to you is, would you do that? <laughs> have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think have is the likely thing. Oh, but I've not had. I've not. But if like, you better. I mean, you'd have if to be the in opportunity close presented with someone itself to get around to like you know sniffing their drawers, like living together at the very least. I I've done here's, it. Here's Oh, <laughs> thank you for thank you Thanks, for Dahlia. you know setting yourself up so you could drop that on everyone. You're welcome. Um, I just I would. I don't know. That smells like my person. I, I don't think I'd smell their shorts, but I'd smell like shirts. Shirts, yeah, so. shorts, like where their taint was. Like I don't know about that. <laughs> but you I, make it sound so ugly. I say that. Well, yeah. Well, genitals are ugly. Taints are <laughs> ugly. <laughs> But, like, here's the thing. I say that, but that being said, if any of my dream mans or people, I'm, J- Jay's rants it done. <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> I would do so it. So you there. would. So I would. I absolutely You got me would. there. You got me there. Got you got him. me there. So, yes, I would. The one thing that was a little bit weird about this one is how he went about it. Mm-hmm. Like, that specifically, the way he went about it, was very odd to me. Like, it's one thing to, like, you know, find the specific spot you're trying to smell and then putting that up to your the nose. taint. But he stuck it on his head. And He stuck it on his head like, you know, like you would expect a two-year-old to put their underwear on their but head. Th- and then he, like, arched his back and shit, and I'm like, boy, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? Thanks for opening that door, because this movie <laughs> was very fucking formative for all the young gays out there today. Between the way they dress, the way they fucking Absolutely. Act. So, for- so informative. Honestly, that... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say... Go ahead. 
No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, when I saw that scene um, in Sir Willem uh, Belli's song, That Boy is a Bottom, in that scene, <laughs> because... <Right? laughs> That's like pro arc or back arching. I love pro bottom propaganda. Oh. <laughs> go on, Sky. I mean, he was... He was just, he just seemed really really into it, you know. I'm also, just Also, I will reiterate what I've been saying this entire time. He's 17. <laughs> right? He's 17. 17 year olds, teenagers, they do weird shit. It's like okay. he doesn't know what to do. It could have been weird. Agreed. I will say it could have been could have been weird. Agreed. He could have so. eaten Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> he could have put it in his mouth. He could have eaten the he shorts. Put it in his mouth. <laughs> all the whole, all the shorts. He could have went meow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You really have to. He could have meowed. He could have meowed. You really, you really have to like think about it though, and think of your own sexual experiences Call and how. Call meow by your name. Okay. Call me by your meow. <laughs> All right. I I'm done now. This podcast is over. <laughs> meow me by your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had Dahlia, to. Dahlia, go I ahead. I'm sorry. Spiral all the way to the bottom. Go ahead, Dahlia. I'm, so I'm sorry, sorry, sweetie. This was a whole moment. <laughs> but like thinking about your like sexual experiences, like whatever you did before you found out how how sex was performed, like what were you doing? You yeah, know? nothing good. It's, I'll tell you that. How how is he supposed to, you know, figure out how this how this works when he really hasn't done it himself? I feel like the time he had sex like later in this movie with one of the girls, it's like, you know, that was probably his first time or something it's not something normal that he does all the time and really is scary at the beginning of your like sexual experience you know you don't know what you're doing you're you're right like he's young and he doesn't know what he's doing and also he's attracted to a man maybe this is like absolutely new feelings completely new territory absolutely that's fair yeah and the toria territory includes sniffing his shorts literally huff my shorts huff (laughs) my i'm just saying shorts if you love the smell of your person, you're going to love the smell of your person. It's taint. And he was never wearing a shirt. He was always wearing shorts. Who, Ar- Army? Yeah. Yeah, he fucking got his body. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is... <laughs> would you do that? Yeah. Have you done that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, moving so... On. Um, is this around the time they fucking do that little roundabout confession? Like, after all this flirtation and shit. If I could ask this question before we move on to the roundabout way. Uh, we're in this tender moment with uh, Elio and his parents. They're reading a story. It's in German. Mom's translating it. And basically, it's kind of like, you know, one of those movie magic things where there's another story parallel to this in there. And so the premise of the story was like um whether it's better to say what you feel or to die and i wanted to ask you guys which one would you pick die would die say how you feel <laughs> i'd obviously just that die that kind of surprises me oh how does this surprise you i've said how yeah. i feel and it really did not turn out the way i thought it was going to turn this out guy's very I good know, at I saying just, what she feels i like to hear you say it i'm i i, I you don't just know. feel the wrong things <laughs> no it's not the wrong things it's just the wrong time and i mean Back when I said how I felt, it was definitely a younger me, a more That's dumber me. <laughs> but at least you said but it. But I, I said how I feel, and I, 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 some points of it I do regret, but I don't regret it because I said how I felt. I would also say how I feel. I, I some so it would just eat away at you, and I just I don't yeah I don't want that. Yeah, as someone who has done multi year pining, um. Up until I think I moved to Philly, I would have done that. I would rather die. But it does eat away at you. One of my biggest regrets in life is not saying things because I just love to pine. Um, And I feel like I didn't learn to just say what I am thinking and feeling until like very, fairly recently. But my gut reaction is always like, die then. (laughs) I will die. (laughs) I'll die mad about it. (laughs) Oh, I just thought I'd ask because I thought that was a really nice thing that they inserted into the story. It's a cute like that leads into motif. But it's tough. It's tough because this is so loaded because they are queer men in the 80s that like to say something is more is less than like just the pining. But like to voice it is such a danger. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
And I think this comes a lot in like Oliver's whole view of like their relationship of like, I don't want to ruin you. I don't want to do this. Like, because I don't know like how hesitant he is to even confess and why that confession scene is so roundabout because they do confess. Like Elliot confesses that he has feelings for him in a very roundabout way. And Oliver also just kind of skirt skirts it as much as possible, even though he confirms it. But it's because it's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, I, I was so confused at that yeah, moment. You were. I was like, are they saying something or are they not saying something? But they were saying everything without saying nothing, which I feel like is very, you know, queer in the 80s type of thing. So beautiful. Anyway, they spend more time together. And then, well, <laughs> well they, those, isn't it? It's the same part where they go to Elia's uh, secret place. Yeah. And, and that's like he shows them that. Yeah. They and sure that's, do. Mm-hmm. That's where they keep. They keep. <laughs> that's where they keep. And then no, no, other no. Things. I want you to say it the way you said it in your notes. Oh, <laughs> they keep. <laughs> they keep. They keep. <laughs> My notes are very chaotic. <laughs> they do kiss, and it's very like raw. <laughs> it is so like I don't know how to kiss that, and also like the the first because it's. Like, two kisses, kind of. Maybe three? I think there's definitely two, because there's the first one where it's, like, very, like, uh, uh, <laughs> kiss. <laughs> and, then, and then it's done, and then I think Oliver says, like, what does he say? Like, oh, are, are you good? Is that good? Or something like that. And then Elio just jumps on him, and they start making out. And I'm like, I've definitely felt that before. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm, 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 You feel mm-hmm. like this, what this movie does so well, and Luca does in general. Look at the director. I've seen... A fair amount of Luca's other movies. He's so good at this fucking tension. And like that, I don't know, it just feels so real. I love it. Yeah, I feel like this was also Oliver's way of saying like, uh, did you get it out of your system? Like, yes. is this just was, a one time like, thing? Like along those lines. And I'm like, I don't know. Is it? And then the makeout happens and then he grabs his crotch. He truly do. He grabs it. I, she sure and I, do. Asked this, I asked this question i was like do you guys think that he was wearing a cup and then they put some meaty stuff on top or do you think that was his actual junk Did i hope there was junk? no barrier between his hand and the junk and said junk aside from the shorts aside from aside, the shorts oh yes of course wearing. aside from the shirt the shorts the skirt. <laughs> the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> the shorts okay and then oliver is basically like no we can't do this like right now and then they end up not speaking for a couple of days yeah and elio is really sad about it yeah it sends him into another spiral girl this this kid has a bunch of spirals which also very understandable at 17 understandable at 27 confused (laughs) understandable let alone 17 years older this is also that reminds of me of me at 17 I don't remember me at 17. You blocked it out. I was too much, too serious. Ugh, I blocked out a lot. Yeah. Um, this is this is the time when he is spiraling that Oliver isn't talking to him after they made out, um, where you get your first song with lyrics in it, and people felt some kind of way about that. Um, it's like um, Feudal Devices by Sufjan Stevens, and people were like, man, the fact that it had lyrics really took me out of it. And I'm really biased as a Sufjan fan that I was like, fuck yes. Um, I don't know what you guys thought. If you even noticed it, if it even made a big deal or took you out of the fantasy. I it might have. I think I might have noticed it, but not enough to like care because I knew you had already talked about the Sufjan stuff. So it was bound to happen at least once. Um, but honestly, I don't think I cared for there being lyrics in most of the songs at all like anytime a lyrical song played i was like "Mm, this is just sufjan fan service which is what i could put it as like it could have just been like a a score and it probably would have been just as good like it did not add or detract i think it added because like a lot of the songs that played during specific parts the lyrics kind of really i don't know they they fit so well i think so I, I really, and I'm not a huge fan like you are. I I mean, when I first watched this movie, I didn't realize he did the soundtrack. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really 
good add to it and the story. For me, the song did not detract from the movie in any way. I think it did add some stuff, but it didn't get me out of the story. I was in there. I, I was like Elio the whole time, so I was like living through him. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> I was just curious. You can cut that out. I'm just a big fan. I'm like, tell me what you feel about the song. No uh, worries. Yeah. Um. So after Elio spirals, he's trying to write a note to Oliver saying, please, 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 please. <laughs> please, can please we talk? Please love me. Please please um and all he doesn't send any of it but oliver i don't think he does but oliver does send a note to him eventually to say to um just grow up. to grow up no, and to me to meet me at midnight give him the note oh good yeah he hmm. does give him a note he yeah, puts he it on we don't know which version yeah he sl- he slid it under the door oh are we talking about elio's note or yeah oliver's yeah note? elio's and elio. oliver oh yeah, yeah. Elio slipped yeah. Under the door. and yeah oliver said grow up meet me at midnight so there's that and anticipation put it, like, on anticipation of gay shit and that was actually really fun at this point i like felt like he was pretty bi but you know given the fact that he was looking at his watch all the way up until midnight because he said meet me at midnight then i'm like he's absolutely gay because it's like like even when he was with a girl he he was was, still looking at the watch 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 every 30 seconds looking at his watch is it midnight yet not no, yet. sun's straight up out. <laughs> <laughs> it's 7 a.m. Oh, Sorry, it's 7 in the morning. It's 7 in the morning. 6 in the morning. I counted the bells. Of course you fucking counted unless... the bells. <laughs> what? I'm like, unless you counted the bells. No. That was one off. No, that was, yeah, that was a TikTok bells. reference. Oh. <laughs> nope. There were bells? Yeah, the church bells. That tells you what time it is. We were watching a the movie? Dawns. <laughs> <laughs> anyway you guys were watching a movie nice <laughs> they meet at midnight and then they touch fingies they touch and dicks then, later <laughs> and then they touch toesies and then they touch dicks <laughs> i love first in a very in a very artsy way <laughs> of course this movie's so artsy i love first second and third base hand foot dick <laughs> hand oh, foot dick <laughs> And at the end of the night, or in the morning, uh, Elio's like, can I have your shirt when you leave? And, you know, it's, like, nice, because I'm like, what a nice reminder th- of this time that we had, right? And then I feel like the rest of the day, they just had, like, raw feelings, like, avoiding each other. And that made me feel sad. But eventually, like, they get back together. Oh, and what a fucking tease. Who? Uh, Oliver? Oliver. Totally. Yeah. Oh, totally. yeah, the, yeah. There was a scene that uh, um, Oliver takes off or has Elio take off his trunks and then he like sucks him off for like two seconds <laughs> and then leaves. I was angry. Why? Because I was Elio in that moment. <laughs> I'm like, why would you do something that's so mean? <laughs> so mean. But uh, yeah, like they they meet up with each other in town. He's like, I just don't want me to be the reason that you're like fucked up like i hope that what we did didn't fuck you up and they don't regret it and we could tell like oliver doesn't regret it he just doesn't want this to be like meaningless you know Mm -hmm. and i feel like it's so important to say and i've like not had conversations about it but i thought about it a lot like anybody could really fall in love at any age you can experience love at any age and i'm not talking just like physical but like true romantic feelings for another person like Love is love is love. And, you know, we can't deny that what they had was something super duper real for them. Like, it really was so meaningful to them, even if they couldn't be together. And that was also very sad. I just wanted to say that. I don't, yeah, I feel that. But also when, like, the middle schoolers at my school are saying, I love him about another 14-year-old, I'm like, but do you? <laughs> Do you know what that means? <laughs> I get that. But They're like learning though. You know? Yeah. It's like that's what all they feel and it's meaningful to them. But yeah. I'm like, okay. Is it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what real love is, but for what they're feeling, it's real. Yeah. You know? Um so it's around this time when like they're still kind of avoiding each other because they're so filled with uncertainty that we get um do we get the peach scene? 
from this. <laughs> that is absolutely what I have next on my list. Great. So Elio wants to f- like fucks his girlfriend one more time. Just one last time. Um, and one more, one, one more, mo, one more. And smacks down the dustiest mattress I've ever fucking seen in my fucking life. Um, thoughts? Concerns? Well, Wait. that was like before. Yeah, was but like, yeah that was, that before, was with dude. the watch scene. That was right after the note. Really? Because I have them right wait, next to each other. Oh, well, then you wrote it wrong. <laughs> I put dusty ass mattress. Yeah, no, that was Would after you the eat note. the peach? <laughs> oh, okay. I think you lumped those together, but uh, mattress um, thing? Uh, hell yeah. If I was like horny enough, let's fucking do it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we get to the peach scene. Dusty, dusty mattress? Dusty mattress? Yeah, why, no. why not? No. No. Why not? No. No. Yes. Not? that's a no for me yes. it's a no, no it's okay it's just like not having sex on a like having sex on a beach it's like it's an infection waiting to happen it's yeah that's yeah, where yeah, my I'm mind not goes the beach that's like, not gonna gonna the seawater the seawater sea is scary and the, the sand the sand the, um the dust and mold scary. the dust and mold on that mattress near my vagina i think not no yeah, no. That's a no for me. Y'all are doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what? Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good Thanks. for you for doing have it fun right. With your, have fun game. with your yeast infection, bro. <laughs> <laughs> have fun with that and two times speed TV shows. Oh, good lord. <laughs> anyway, Peach drag scene. me, Antonio. We gotta right, talk Kato about really the wants peach to talk scene. about fucking the gotta peach. Talk look, look, we reach the peach scene. for the peach. And the then peach. what we happens? We have to like, edit some parts of that out. <laughs> we will. We absolutely will. What? The edit peach. some of those oh we have to edit the peach no not not the peach necessarily in and of itself but some parts of it because i know some of y'all gonna want to talk about it like would you eat it <laughs> <laughs> okay first off, would you eat it would you eat the peach? i would like to say because i in the movie i thought he actually ate it because in the book he eats it that's he why does. when i was making that face you were like why are you making that face i was like you'll fucking see <laughs> but he didn't do it but he fucking eats it in the book i'd eat it and i was like <laughs> it's also very okay like everyone and their fucking mother has talked about the peach scene like it's very emotional from what i know in the books like i mean it's oh yeah emotional it looks very emotional too. in the fucking movie yeah yeah it was, yeah i was like okay that's that's not the grossest or sickest thing i've ever seen in my life you can chillax a little but i mean i suppose when you're a 17 year old boy in the 80s and you don't have any sexual experience whatsoever sure but uh when he turns around, he's like, I'm sick. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Knock can it you, off. You could have meowed. Can you explain meowed. to me, uh, as, as a book reader? Bro, I love that we're like, <laughs> everything could be worse. You could have meowed. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, can you explain to me as the book readers why it was so... I'm the only one that read the book. Oh, okay. I so thought I that Kessel did. Yeah, why was it so upsetting for him? Because he... I mean, in the movie, you can see that he was so distraught. Like, why are you doing this to me? Like, he feels shameful like humiliated almost i think he he was just you know shot i i don't know if shocked is the right word but like that someone would want to do that yeah i mean i like we've seen a like lot of him things enough to do that so yeah. i think that's why he was very it's like almost emotional. it's so like, intimate yeah yes yeah yes that's scary okay. especially it as is. like queer men like again in yeah. the 80s like it's just, yeah, it's it's the power of, of that intimacy that's like, holy shit, this is so real, and I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. And um, I will say, again, he's 17, so, like, your feelings are all over the place, and they're all, some of them are new feelings, so it's just... Are you still it's 17? It's almost scary. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 27, bro. That was 10 years ago. That was 10 years but ago. But it's like, it's... but he's so young so like yeah him crying about all this and stuff it's not almost super 11 for you too it's shocking oh gee thanks <laughs> i love to be reminded of that hey oh, but I'm would y'all cool. eat that peach though <laughs> um <laughs> yes i mean in the context of the story or Dude, like sh- with my partner like, like tell I, guess, me, I mean tell me what the situation is first that's still a partner in that time is it going to be a long-term partner no, but I'm I mean like in the context of me as Elio and or me as Oliver in the movie with Elio, or are you talking about if I would do that like, you know, with my in your everyday life with of, your partner. Like, if your partner masturbated into a peach, would you have eaten the peach afterwards? Not really. 
I, it doesn't make me feel like I want to. It but does, you feel like no empowerment whatsoever doing that? I'd be like, yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. But it almost repulses me to think about that. In the in the intimacy, if my brain was like in an intimate moment and it was like very like sexual, very heated, sensual. You know, you're with the flow. You I, might I would be it. inclined to, to bite it and eat it. I think that I would do that. But to think about, to it's like, just to be it. like, <laughs> and then like eat it like eat it <laughs> yeah you know what? i'm not gonna do that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know this does bring up a th- uh, very interesting aspect is that that peach was sitting there for a bit before he ate it thoughts? that's also what repulses me <laughs> thoughts <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> nasty <laughs> oh like it was a whole sleep like, oh did it you was finally open- that? Uh, i don't like it i don't like oh, it oh that's right you just opened it i'm so sorry yeah i don't like it either, can you tell the listeners what you're drinking uh, oh, maple I, pear bud light seltzer it's one of their fall flannel the new seltzies from bud light came out sky more was pear like, next time it. please more pear less maple yeah it's too or, much more yeah because bud light maple. listens to our podcast hey, <laughs> the, bud bu- the bud light um try the christmas apple the apple crispy uh Happy it's good crisp. uh maple pear no I, i'm so sorry for all of your ears but good lord don't don't drink it We've been drinking it. it. We're going to drink it. We have to. We're going to drink every flavor. Tastes like Are you gonna be a little bitch about it? <laughs> like shitty pancakes without the pancakes because it's only There's maple. like no pear. Here, let's do a quick like. It's like the, I Dude, like I wish you. Have a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could try this because it seriously tastes like. It's rank I, maple seltzer. And it's I, but you like know sugar what? free maple. I'm good. Sh- sugar Thanks, free so. maple. Thanks That's for what thinking it tastes of like. me. There are zero grams of sugar, so I suppose that makes sense. Yeah. That's why it's got that nasty after flavor. Yeah. Anyway, back to the... Would you eat the peach? Uh, You know, I... (laughs) I... Judging from how I reacted when I read the book, no. But I think how you explained it, where it's like in the moment, like intimate, like that power, I guess. Yeah. But like just coming in... Having it had sa- like sat there sat. for like however many hours. No. I no 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 no. It's but probably all cold and a little. Please cool. don't describe it. You know. No 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 no. Hop on our bikes. So yes. So uh, the end of Oliver's stay is coming closer and closer. Um, and so Elio's parents, they know what's going on. They see, they got eyes, and they know their son very well. They're very good parents. So they suggest that they uh spend some extra time together. Oliver was going to go somewhere else and fly home from there. And they tell Elio to go with him. And so basically they can have a little more time together to, uh, be gay and fuck and have be romantic and public and just have a good old time. And it was amazing. And it was perfect. It was like everything a last day should be. Is you it know? though? It was very beautiful. It very was beautiful, beautiful up until the montages. point where like Oliver, had decided to uh um they had both been drinking and oliver had decided to dance with some girl in front of a church and elio goes and throws up i think well, it, it was still lit then. you of you no not the throwing up part i thought that was just sad why that he went to just dance with somebody else yeah on like his last times with someone that he was like having a relationship with or a fling i think i think it's also um, the fact that he can dance publicly with her and it not be weird you know what i mean yeah yeah that's what I took from it a little bit. And, you know, at that point, I don't think that Elio was in any position to continue hopping around like Oliver, who can hold his drink. And he's an American, obviously, you know, binge drinking is over here. I'm sure Brat it was boy. like that in the 80s. But uh, Elio, he drinks probably with his meals like normal people do in Europe. And he threw up and that was like the end of their night. But they still went off together and hugged against a wall and like even kissed and i'm just gonna say i'm not gonna kiss my person after they barf but i thought that was sweet you wouldn't you wouldn't you would wouldn't give kiss him a your peck. husband's vomit breath i would give him a peck but i'm not gonna I open my mouth if you love them you, you're in for a penny you're in for a pound if you don't eat their poop you don't love them <laughs> <laughs> dude what did that have to do with anything she just said i know <laughs> Oh well, because Antonio was like, if you love them, you do. That. I'm like, I don't think talking so. about kissing them after they throw up, not eating their shit, I, dude. <laughs> I'm taking it a step further. Good Lord. Well, I think it was still a really good night because they went to sleep. <laughs> it was a good <clears throat> night. They went to sleep and then they woke up and then it was like immediately like as soon as you open your eyes, you're like, 
oh fuck it's here today's the day and it really really sucks because like before that during the day also we forgot to mention they were like frolicking in the mountains near this waterfall and then they kind of paid homage to their like uh call me by your name when they first had sex their first encounter they were like call me by your name and so call you by mine. elio I, yeah. was saying elio oliver was saying oliver and they were screaming at the top of their lungs on this mountain and it was nice it was great and i'm like it was romantic that's real love and it was just so sad it was so sad. And then, you know, that's like the last day that they see each other. Oliver gets on the train. He leaves. And it's sad. And Elio is waiting there for his train. But he goes to the payphone. He calls his mom. And he's like, can you come pick me up? And he kind of just starts crying. And then it's just. I don't last know. Last spiral. It's so sad. Oh, no, no. Second to last It's so spiral. fucking sad. It's so sad because like. I can think of the times where, like, I've called my mom being sad and that voice break. I was like, yep, yep. I felt that because I was like, oof. It's like you hold it together until, like, you see, like, your parent or, like, someone you love and then you're done. Do you have that? What do I have? When you call your mom and your voice breaks when you talk to her. I have. (laughs) (laughs) Silence. (laughs) No, no, I just, like, went to a place. I'm still kind of sad myself, but... Yeah, I've been there. Or even like talking to like, it's like someone you love, like when you're like, hold it together. And then like, I call one of you guys and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. lose it, you know, like, yeah, yeah, that's what I did to, to you be. guys yesterday. Oh, I blacked those out. <laughs> <laughs> even when I call you guys. You or never you call fact, us. <laughs> uh, I never call either of you two. No, I have called you. Yeah, I've done that to my aunt, done that to my siblings, done that to y'all. Yeah, and you've called me before, Antonio. I have called you, but I emotionally blacked those out immediately afterwards. <laughs> so you don't remember I've it. I've seen you cry twice, and I did not know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I panicked. <laughs> I don't and know I cried to do too. When I cry. I'm like, ugh, this is, I'm done. <laughs> I feel like if you don't cry, though, it's like, do you even have emotions? This part of the movie was really, really fucking sad. Like, Aww. I don't think that anybody could have. I don't even think Elio saw the sadness coming. He's like, hey, mom, I'm doing great. Like, I'm doing just fine. And then he's like, can you can you come pick me up? And I was like, oh, that was really sad. The whole car ride. Where his mom knows. His mom is just being. Oh, and I I do want to shout out the mom. And just how fucking like fantastic of a life that she just like has created for her family and like the persona that she is you know within like the first like 15 minutes every scene she had been in she had like a cigarette in her hand and i was like how chic she yeah. also spoke m- multiple languages and yeah. she was nice she and was kind. speaking german she was speaking italian with her family and then french with her um, husband and son yeah it was a whole like i loved the mom the mom was amazing He's got good parents because this leads into the the big famous dad monologue, the dad mm. speech that when I was in theater was the part that made me start sobbing <laughs> right That's next to an acquaintance. Sobbing. Yeah. Oh, God. Big feels. It was so perfect. Like, and you know how he said they they said everything without saying nothing when they said their feelings to each other. The dad, he wasn't really explicitly saying things, but I feel like he said everything right. You know, and I think at some point he did say your friendship and maybe it's more than that. But I was Mm -hmm. like, he didn't like negate any feelings about it. He was like, if it was more than that, then it was. And he like revealed what you and I had both talked about earlier. I was like, what was dad also gay? And you're like, oh, I think he just appreciates the male body like for the art. He was a little (laughs) gay. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Turns out dad was a little gay in his youth. Yeah. And you know that whole like um did mom know? I always read and had understood it as Elio asking him if the mom knew about the dads like previous. Oh, yeah. I feel like that was what because mom you asked. Yeah, yeah I had asked. You, asked. I, you guys asked, couldn't hear me. <laughs> you guys couldn't hear me, so I'm like, I'll talk about this later. <laughs> yeah. So because like obviously the mother knows about Elio because she like comforts him in the car, and mm-hmm. uh, so I always I, understood. She was it. the one who who prompted him to the yeah, dad like, to take the vacation like those so, two should take a vacation so i think ellie was asking like you know does mom know about you and oh. 
she's he's like i don't i don't think she does but knowing mom and how observant she is she probably does <laughs> everyone's a little knows? gay everyone's a little gay but it was really That's sweet true. and it's such that's my this movie is so beautiful in so many ways but that's my favorite scene that's my favorite scene too even in the book too having read the book it's the exact same way and it that part in the book made me cry so hard because it's just like he said everything right like you said he just hit every feeling on the the mark it was just so good such a good monologue and like I know we'll get into quotes later. I didn't write anything down, but that I whole thing was no just idea. filled with like every single the heart and the body, yeah, and then everything after that, yeah. Oh, it's just so good. So good. I feel like they like kind of encouraged it to figure mm-hmm. himself out, and it's like he didn't dispel like, oh, you're 17, you don't know anything, like you're just like a dumb kid, you don't even know your own feelings. Like he's like. I think what you two had was really like it was real beautiful and it was so so special and I don't want you to think that that's anything but because a lot of people don't get to feel that ever yeah yeah so you get to walk through life feeling that knowing that and knowing it was real while others before you or even you know after you will never know what that feels like and it was uh, just so beautiful that's a video you should watch if you don't watch this movie, that's a video you should watch on YouTube. Just, <laughs> just that just monologue. The mm-hmm. But there is a time skip a little bit to winter. And um, and this is the end of uh, the movie. But they get a call from Oliver. Though you wrote Ollie boy. In Ollie, your boy. Notes. <laughs> Ollie boy. Ollie um, boy. And, you know, Elio is obviously very happy to hear from him. And they're like, they exchange your I miss you's. But then Oliver lets him know that he is engaged to be married. Um, and Elio is obviously upset about it. And it's going to happen. But at the end, they still call each other by, you know, their names. And then, so Elio, they hang up. And Elio goes into my second favorite scene, which is when he just goes and stares at the fireplace and goes through, like, the five stages of grief before ending on acceptance. <laughs> While Sufjan Stevens' Visions of Gideon plays, and I cry. <laughs> so good. It was so good. That call, like, that call was, like, so sad. And, like, he's like, my parents know. And then he's like, I kind of figured. And, I, you know, when they did call each other by their names, like, Oliver only said Oliver once. Elio mm-hmm. said Elio a bunch of times. Yeah, he's like, Elio, Elio. But I think the most important thing after that was he's like i remember everything Mm -hmm. and i think him just saying that after just saying his name once was really important you know he's like just because i'm engaged to be married now doesn't mean that i forgot everything that happened between us but life moves on and we have to move on and that was so beautiful and so sad because this is this is life you know this is real it happens all the time. People miss each other. And I'm like, I feel like they put that together so beautifully. And I, I didn't realize, like, I think as you were saying it, the five stages of grief that he was going through that looking at the fire. Because I did see his facial expressions, like, change. Timothy, as much he as he acted as fun little of him, ass off. His little fucking ass off. His tiny little butt off. And good for her. Good, good for, for her. fucking her. That's seriously one of my like fucking favorite scenes. Uh, it's very good. And is that it? That's the movie. Now that's why we're sad and upsetty. Yeah, I'm very like melancholy. It's very it's a very sad movie. It makes me feel good though. It's about first love and first love does feel like that where it's sad, but it's also very beautiful, you know? Oh man, that when you say first love it just takes me to like my first love. And how I never had closure up until I finally had closure. And I was like, <laughs> I was... Is it self-closure? No. Well, maybe. I, r- I learned a lot about myself through that whole entire time. And I would embarrassingly say it was a rather long time and even throughout relationships. But I figured myself out a lot. And I don't think that I would have been able to do that without that closure. And I'm glad that it ended when it ended. But I'm happy. Life moves on. 
and I'm in a really good relationship now. I can't be mad about that. But wow, like first loves just thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know. Man. I'm a romantic, so. It's so interesting because I feel like when we were going through our horror movies, like with The Conjuring, we had a very intense conversation about spirituality. And this is the movie that we're like, man, love, man, <laughs> intimacy. <laughs> love. I love, love love and intimacy. Sadness. It's a fucking pain in the ass sometimes. I love love. I really do. I still got to watch love. Pride and Prejudice again by myself to really like immerse myself. This time I was able to put myself in their shoes. Maybe it was just because we were like shitting around so much. Yeah. I'm pleased that this was a queer love movie where nobody dies. I mean, it's still sad, but if you compare it to other queer love stories, at least no one fucking died in this. It's very realistic, and I think that's what I loved about it the most. It's more like slice of life almost. Yeah. But like a very important part of your life. So, thoughts? (laughs) I love this movie. Oh, Dahlia. Do you want to read the Yay. book? I think we like pushed it off for way too long, or maybe you guys are catching me at my most tender moment. I would like to read the book. I still have Dune on my bed, but I, <laughs> that's a monster. I'm a little scared to get through that, but I think it was such a great film. So I tasteful. I do think it was a really good movie. So I think artsy. It's something, it's something that everyone should watch at least. I think there are a lot of other oh. like gay movies that I would have preferred to like rewatch or anything like this, but... I 100% would say, yes, everyone should watch this movie at least once. So well I still written. sit by, like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, you know, just how, just straight portrayal. Army Hammer versus Timothy Chalamet. Visual. Visually, visually, it's just off to me in my head. I, mm. like, mm-hmm. it's still, when you tell me they're 17 and 24, sorry, you, you might be saying those words, but I don't believe it. Um, fair, that's fair. And that's why it's so hard, and sure, maybe Army Hammer is a great actor in this but there are other good actors that looked younger that could have been like a good fit hey for this. that's t i mean especially considering he turns out to be an alleged cannibal <laughs> <laughs> i will say i mean I think, especially i like i said i i enjoyed him as oliver um but i will say i think Army Hammer is definitely one of those actors that Hollywood definitely tried to push onto all of us because he has been in a lot of flops, a lot of Mm -hmm. flops, except for this, probably, (laughs) except for this. And the social network. That that was another one, too. Oh, I I forget that he's in that. So I think this was probably part of that campaign. (laughs) The Army Hammer Just, campaign. Well, yeah. I mean, he's from like a, ri- a really rich family, right? A That's very the f- rich and very fucked up family. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm going to leave it off of that. Cause We're not going to get into it. This is too much to talk okay. about. But definitely crazy. So, hot cast. Uh, we know how we feel about Army oh. Hammer in our conflicting ways. Yeah. I love everybody that I was in this movie. I did enjoy everyone in this movie. Even yeah. at right down to like Mafalda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Snaps from Mafalda. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. She probably figured it out first and was like, mistress. She's like, mm, not my business. <laughs> Let me tell you a thing. <laughs> if you fucking zoom out on every intimate scene and she was just like walking around in the back, she always knew. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. She, probably left, that one, she probably left that one pair of shorts unwashed specifically for Elio. <laughs> yeah, she was like, mm, I got <laughs> you boy, freak. <laughs> oh, he a freak freak. freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she a freak freak. Let's see if he gets a fucking nosebleed later. Um, uh, soundtrack slash score. The music you know was I perfect. Uh, I think what everything, think? I actually heard the music. It really did like kind of, you know, flow through the film. It did. It did a very good job of like flowing through the film. I'm a hoe for classical music. And this <laughs> yeah. Was a lot of classics. It was a yeah. lot of classics. It was a lot of classics. Mm-hmm. A lot of, uh, the, a lot of like big, big, uh, very classic classicals i don't know what to say because <laughs> like classicals so if you had only contributed like, the uh like three songs the songs you know like mm-hmm. you said there was the revival of that song which leads into fucking the fucking costuming Love oh it. boy the 80s it. what a motherfucking honestly i don't even know if that's really how they dressed in the 80s i i'll tell you i think that that's how they dressed in the 80s in, in italy in Italy, mm-hmm. I okay, think that I that's it. correct yeah. because mm-hmm. it really, it really did feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like they, 
I, when I was over there, I just came back from France like Wednesday. And while I was there, I'm like, everybody do be dressed in some type of way. So the whole film, people were dressing like some type of way and everybody was kind of dressed like that. I'm mm-hmm. like, I can believe it. And, you know, you know we saw their little music videos on the TV. They were dressed in that fashion. And like TBH, honestly, the set design and location was like everything for me. But I have just come back from like like San Tropez is like literally right next to Italy and it's very like Italian and I'm just like how beautiful and amazing it just makes me so nostalgic and love it I think everything was so wonderful and perfect Italy's every outfit was great yeah. and uh, romantic so romantic Everything. Go ahead, Sky. Uh, she's just so ch- Dahlia's over here just wanting to like pour out all of her feelings <laughs> over everything about that I love Europe <laughs> Uh, Italy is one of my dream vacation spots, so I love the sets and location of this movie. Very beautiful. Yeah. Um, Elio's final look of the turtleneck with the very graphic button down changed my life when I saw oh it. Oh my love god, her. that graphic button I, down I, looked mm-hmm. so like Eve Saint Laurent esque to me. I Dude, was like, when I saw mm, when I saw that in theaters, I was like. Holy shit. I own fucking three black that? turtlenecks now. Yeah. I literally, like, my fall look is a turtleneck with a very flowy button down uh, <laughs> because of him. How butch for you. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Memorable quotes. The whole monologue. The heart in the, the body mm-hmm. monologue from the dad. Because he said one line and I was like, oh, I'll write that down. And then the next line I was like, Oh, maybe that one. And then he just kept going. And I was like, I just, the whole thing is just so. And also. So beautiful. Call me by your name. Just like that whole quote. And I'll call you by yours. Yeah. Mine was me. Okay. <laughs> Cause that was you. <laughs> that was you. Yeah. Who said that? <laughs> Elio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He said it at one point. Me. Okay. <laughs> me. Okay. <laughs> I made a comment about it when it happened. I was like, okay, Ketzel. <laughs> I think I saw that subtitle, but I brushed it off. All right. Antonio? I quotes? don't have any memorable quotes. Like, nothing super hit out to me. But, I mean, I suppose, like, obviously the monologue is a very big part of this movie. If I had to, like, pick apart, like, one thing to, like, be recited, I couldn't. But the monologue's really good. I think a lot of the... Uh, um a lot of the dialogue is just very specific, like contextual stuff. So I don't have any memorable quotes. All right. Well, that leads right. us into um, final thoughts, which they, I feel like you guys already answered that. Like people should watch this film, but do you think it lived up to the hype for y'all? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. It did live up to the hype. It really did. I worry a little too much and what we've done to it in this entire time. Because if you remember, like since the beginning of this podcast, we've been trying to watch Call Me By Your Name and it just kept getting pushed back. Yep. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just one of those where you're like, I just got to sit down and watch it. But like. Truly. And it took this podcast for me to sit down and watch it because you, uh, my thoughts have been all over the place on this movie. Like, But now that we're, now that we're here, absolutely. I think it was worth the hype. 100%. But would I have watched? I honestly can't say that I would have sat down and be like, oh, let's watch that. Blah, 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 blah. At any point in my life, I probably would have found a million other things to get around to first. Yeah, like Feast 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. <laughs> 1, 2, and 3. I'd watch all three of those. <gasps> There's only three? Yeah. For some reason, I thought there was more. I thought there was oh, like is that five. Wrong turn? Antonio's making the. It, it, making wrong. it took fiction. six wrong turns to make one right turn. <laughs> it sure did because the remake, the 2021 remake. Well, we remake, never even watched the first like three. We just jumped into four because it happened to be on HBO at the time. Six wrong turns to make well, one right one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, to an extent, I do agree with uh, Antonio. Um, I never know how I feel about uh, non-openly queer actors playing queer people. There's a lot of queer cinema out there. This was definitely one for the masses. It was damn good. And it makes me want to watch more queer cinema. And you should too. Agreed. There are a whole bunch of like yep. smaller gay movies that, you know, maybe I left watch, left off watching them feeling a lot better than I did after this. But I will 100% think that like, you know, the effort put into this movie, the production value and everything, it paid off. It paid off. It wasn't like a flop in any capacity. 
Luca is that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'll say. Yeah. There's, and I guess I'll say, because I read the book as well, and recently, wow. uh, it was a very good book to movie adaptation. It didn't really change too much, and when it did change stuff, it was for the better. Um, the book ends completely differently than the movie. Um, I do know there's another book, I believe. There's there a sequel, also, mm-hmm. uh, and there's supposed to be a sequel to this movie. However, <laughs> don't, however, don't know if that's happening. There, I don't think they were. In light of recent events, because, because someone decided to be a nasty boy. Someone woke up and chose human flesh, allegedly. Allegedly, toes. Not the toes. I think he kissed one foot, and then all of a sudden wanted to keep a toe around with him all the time. Eek. Eek. Oh, uh, uh, one of the pieces of trivia that I happen to know about this movie, randomly, was that I don't know if it was the director, Luca, or if it was someone else, but the peach scene almost didn't happen until someone on the production team, um, or behind-the-scenes sort of situation, actually attempted it at home before they decided, yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> good for them. I love that. That's a good note to leave off on. <laughs> <laughs> Go get your rocks off, kids. Go eat that peach. <laughs> eat that peach. Reach that peach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Move that bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was good. Should we also say something like for gay rights? Like, if you don't like this and you don't like, absolutely. Wait, wait, if you don't, if oh, you don't like, like the, if, if you, you don't, don't like this gay, gay shit, get the fuck out. You shouldn't have been here from episode one. You <laughs> yeah. shouldn't have, you if should you have don't actually, like- you should have turned around when you saw Sit Down Losers. <laughs> that in and of, in and of That's itself the gayest references quote. one of the gayest movies on mama, the planet. Mama, 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 it's in our bio. It says <laughs> queer right there. Girl, girl, if you don't like girl. cinema, get out of here because at one <laughs> baby, point it's baby, gonna be queer. Baby. <laughs> if you're not here for the queer, you don't belong here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use here to rhyme with here. I didn't. She did. <laughs> if I you're did. not here, are you here? <laughs> But for All realsies, right. <laughs> for realsies, if you don't agree, get why, the fuck out. Why were you even listening? Why are you here? <laughs> At what point did you see anything about Call Me By Your Name and think, oh, I should probably listen to this? Did you come here to get dragged? Because we're dragging you. <laughs> don't even add us. All right. I, I guess some people's kinks are meow and some people's kinks <laughs> are domination and humiliation. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that concludes this episode of Sit Down, Loser. We're watching a movie. We'll catch you next time. Later. Later oh, my God. <laughs> Let's try that again. Laters. <laughs> later, losers. No, keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't say laters, baby. <laughs> laters, babe. Oh, my God.